Kevin. Uh, I guess first off, uh, what what is the mindset going into training camp? You took care of some important business with the naming of the captain. Uh, you know, Rick mentioned that you've got to be better uh, after the way things went last year. So uh, w w what about you? What's your speech to the guys? So this is an exciting time. I think that, uh, you know, again, there's two two kind of milestone, you know, moments in the uh, you know, in the year where, you know, you get really, really excited. You know, training camp is one of them, obviously. Um, you know, you get a chance to, uh, to get back as a group, you know, see all the, all the players, all the guys. Uh, if there's some new faces, you get, you know, acclimated with them. Uh, some of the veteran faces, you know, you, you talk about, you know, how things are, are going to get better and how you're going to, you know, continue to, to push. And then obviously the other one is the playoffs. Uh, those are the most exciting times when, when you get those things started. So we're excited to get things started here. I think that, um, you know, Anxious to see, you know, what some of the uh, the new look of the players and how that meshes and how that, um, you know, kind of coincides with uh, the overall vision and, 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 you know, get things started. Because of the, the quality of the players on expiring contracts for this franchise in particular, uh, is would it be an exaggeration to say this will be the most defining season of the 13th that you've had so far? You know, so it's an interesting time right now. Obviously, we're, we're going through uh, um, and hopefully, you know, knocking on wood here coming out of, uh, you know, the pandemic type of cap system and, and how you have to manage things. Um, you know, I, I don't know that the unrestricted free agent side of it or potential unrestricted free agent side is different you know, than, than other teams as well, because, you know, over a period of time, you know, you have players under contract. Uh, obviously, we've had the, you know, we'll call it flat cap, but, you know, minimal increase in the cap over the last uh, last couple of years, and you've had to manage that, um, you know, kind of accordingly. And, and even though, there, you know, the projections, you know, of the cap, you know, going up, um, you know, a, a certain amount is something that everybody is hopeful of, you're still going to have to manage those assets, and, and um, we'll see how it all plays out. But, that aside is really, you know, like I know those are all kind of talking points and things that everyone's kind of concerned about, but at the end of the day, we're here to play the game, we're here to win. And, you know, that's what this group, I think, is really going to be focused on. Um, you've got to make the playoffs first. I think that's the single most important thing that, you know, everyone, you know, needs to, you know, keep in their mind. They need to play a certain way in order to earn that right. Uh, and, and then once you get there, um, you know, you, you have to, you know, you have to pay the price. You have to do the things. You have to take it one step further to, um, you know, to, to try to achieve your ultimate goal. We didn't do that. Um, and I think everyone to a man, you know, knows that, you know, the process starts now. Is there anything you could take from the Ladd and Bufflin situation? I mean, it's not, it, it's similar to some degree. You had your captain and one of your most important players. Was there anything you learned from that process that you will take into these negotiations? Well, I think that, you know, you've learned obviously that, um, you know, uh, either of those different, you know, negotiations went one way or another. You know, obviously in the Ladd situation, um, you know, we, we weren't in a playoff position. You know, we weren't in a situation where uh, there was an extension, uh, you know, in place. In the buff side of it, you know, we were able to get an extension in place. So everyone is different. Um, you know, how we approach, you know, uh, the, the, the future of this team, again, that's, that'll be, you know, looked at as we continue to move forward. But, you know, the main focus that everyone, everyone should be concerned about here is, is the fact that we're here to try to win. Do you the general manager carry into the season, though, Kevin? Okay, sorry, the I only contract, Which what? The contracts of Mark and, and Connor, do you expect that to carry into the season at this point? Yeah, I'm not going to, you know, I guess I don't have a time frame, you know, per se on, uh, on anything right now. You know that, it, like, in Canadian markets, it, it can be quite a distraction, though, especially to high-profile guys. Only if you guys make it. <laughs> As general manager, in the first week of training camp, what are you looking for in terms of evaluating the team? When there's, you know, close to 15 players on the ice, two sessions, what are you looking for, and what's that process? Yeah, so, you know, again, early on, there's always, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, an evaluation process that does go on. You have a couple of exhibition games early for, for some of the veteran guys. You're just looking for them to, you know, knock the rust off and, and get, uh, you know, get acclimated. Uh, for some of the younger players, you're, you know, you, for some of them, it's new. For some of them, you know, uh, they're the first time that we're seeing them uh, in an NHL training camp type of, uh, you know, forum, and you, and you want to see where they're at. Uh, if they've been part of your organization for a year or two years or whatever, you're looking for progress. You're looking to see... Um, you know, uh, what areas of their game have or, you know, need to improve or different things like that. Um, again, it, it's, it's a competitive time. It's an exciting time for all the players, but it's a, you know, it's a competitive and, and nerve-wracking time too, I'm sure. In terms of planning it, though, do you kind of start with, okay, we want these players to play this amount of games and then build up the roster from there because the, the rules and the requirements and whatnot? Yeah, so, you know, again, uh, there's a certain number of games, I think, that coaches and, and veteran players want to try to, 
um, you know, get players in. I think that, uh, you know, th those are the kind of conversations that the coaches have. And, and you have to see how injuries play out and, and different things like that for, for each individual. Um, but, you know, you, you, you try to give as much opportunity as you can, but there's, there's certain, you know, certain races and competitions and different things that, uh, you know, might need to get more attention than others. Kevin, I know you said last week at Adam's uh, announcement that you were going to sit down with Connor once he got into town. Yep. Obviously, I assume that's happened. Yep. I, I know you can't give us details, but can you just categorize what that meeting was like? It was a good meeting. You know, I think we sat down, we chatted, and, uh, you know, again, you know, he's a, uh, he's a pro. He's been at this for, you know, for a, for a long, long time now. And, uh, you know, again, we, we, you know, a lot of the focus of the, the, the meeting and that was exactly what I said. Like, we're here to try to win. When you have players that are going into that final year, is there a potential benefit to the team in that, not that these guys need extra motivation, but there might be a bit of an extra motivator there. They're playing for their next contracts regardless of who it comes from. Well, they're, they're all professionals, and they've, you know, when you, when you get to a point in time, as a lot of these guys have, they're, they're veteran professionals too. They're, so they've, they've been around the game. They know the business side of it. Um, we've all felt the effects of, of the, you know, the flatness of the cap. They know it. We've talked about it, uh, you know, in casual conversations when you're not even, you know, talking about your own contracts, you know, in general. I think these guys do a good job of, of understanding uh, where today's game is at and, and where they're at in their careers. And, and again, they're professionals. You look at potentially Morgan Barron, Vlad Nemestikov starting on the fourth line. It, it would look like you guys maybe have one of the deepest forward groups you've ever had here. Would you agree with that? So I, I think I said it when we made the trade. Um, you know, we were looking to you know add some depth and dimension to the organization, certainly up front. And I think you know we've done that. And um, you know, with that, there's you know there's lots of competition. You know, it's stiff, and uh, um, which is good. You know, because you don't know what injuries are going to happen. You don't know how it, how it's all going to play out. Um, you can't look into your crystal ball and you know even think beyond you know today. You know, as far as how things might play out. So. Um, I, I'm, like I said, I'm excited for you know that. I'm excited to see some of the things play out in training camp. Do you think you guys are tougher to play against potentially? Uh, you know, I, I guess you'd have to look at it, and, and you know, to, to me, it becomes a you know a mentality. I think you know toughness is a different term now. I think than you know what it used to be. Um, you know, with respect to uh, you know the old days of you know tough. Um, I, I think you have to you know. Be disciplined to a system and disciplined to a belief, and set the standards high. And I think that that makes you a tough team to play against. In the spring, we were asking, so what's the focus? What's the vision? You said, hold up, we we need to evaluate this. And now, very confidently, you're saying we're winning now. I imagine that's part of the pitch to, to Connor and Mark and everybody like that. Um, I'm wondering what the best argument that maybe the world is sleeping on the Winnipeg Jets and their depth and their quality might be right now. Well, you know, I, I think that, you know, again, we sat back, we looked at a lot of different things. We made some, you know, some big moves this summer, obviously, in the trade and, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and the buyout, uh, you know, with wheels and, and obviously changing the complexion of the forward group, um, you know, uh, naming Adam, you know, as captain and, and uh, you know, the room itself, you know, growing as far as, you know, the leadership side of it. But, you know, everyone's going to sit here in training camp and, and certainly be excited about their teams and the different changes and, and the different opportunities that are there. You know, and, and the longer you're in this, the more you, you know, begin to understand that you have to earn it. You know, and, and each and every player, you know, there, there's no given right to make the playoffs. There's no given right that you're going to achieve X, you know, in the, uh, in the regular season. Um, this is a tough league. And, um, you, know, the, you know, the players, you know, know that. And, you know, I, I think they embrace that. Curious to see from Cole in the middle. And what made it, I mean, in terms of him and Gabe are both great options there. Yeah. Why Cole first, and what do you need to see from him to win the job? Well, I, I think you know going back, you know, you look at the, some of uh, you know Gabe's most successful times last year. I think you know was on the wing. I think you know he he uh, he can ramp up his production in there, and, and and then nothing's I guess set in stone or etched in stone. I think you have that good you know good feeling. But we did draft Cole as uh, you know as a centerman and envisioned him as a centerman at some point in time. Um, you know, in his tenure, I think unfortunately for him. You know, he got derailed a couple of times when, when you know, guys like Scheif or something got hurt and, and that opportunity might have been there for him, you know, last year where you would have got that opportunity to play, you know, you know a bigger role at center. So um, I'm excited for him. I think, you know, I know how hard he worked this summer. He changed trainers, I believe. And I think he's, uh, you know, he, he's got, you know, he's got something to prove for sure. His vision smarts can help Nikolai Ehlers too as he to, looks to ramp, ramp up. 
Yeah, again, I, you know, Nick is, uh, you know, has exceptional speed and has exceptional, uh, you know, abilities. You're looking, you know, for uh, for chemistry, and I guess that's partly where, you know, things, you know, kind of start. You got to start somewhere with, you know, trying to develop some things. And and again, there's a lot of there's a lot of new parts there. I think that, um, you know, everyone has an idea of what they want to see when they go out there. But when you you know you kind of wait and see how it all unfolds. Battles too. Obviously, you've got a lot of great candidates there. Maybe kind of more NHL-ready guys than spots. So what are you looking for on the back end? Well, again, I think just to, you know that 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 continuation for some guys, uh, you know, to uh, to prove that they belong, and the continuation for some of the uh, veteran guys to show that um, you know we didn't get the job done last year that we wanted to, and want to take those next steps. So. Um, you know, again, it's uh, it's a, it's a long process. Uh, you know, with respect to getting to a point in time in an organization where you you know you feel like you have some depth, and, and um, you know that's a good thing. Sorry, does last year uh, with with Kovacevic influence how you sort of play? your waiver strategy maybe let's say this year yeah you know again wa waivers uh, are an interesting thing you know we've we've made some waiver claims obviously we've lost some players on waiver claims you're you know um you, you don't know it's, it's a crapshoot you know so to speak but you just have to make your evaluations uh you know based on the best information that you you know you have at the you know at the time and um you know you go from there so you, it doesn't necessarily force you to do you know one thing or another players you know earn their opportunities to get to that point and um, you know, again, we're just looking to put the best six, seven, eight guys, uh, you know, on the uh, on the roster. Kevin, just sort of a bigger picture question about the league as a whole. Do you see a lot of veteran guys that had trouble even getting contracts in the league, guys on PTOs? Um, you know, it's becoming a bit of a younger players league, right? Is that just and the flat cap? I guess all that is kind of combining to really change the way the game is. Yeah, I think you know goes back to um, you know to that cap situation where. Um, you know, again, when the cap goes up a million dollars, like, and you think about it, um, minimum salary was 750 a couple of years ago. Minimum salary 775. You know, it doesn't seem like much, but put that across 10 players, and you know, all of a sudden it all adds up. You know, and those are things that um, every little bit counts. You know, like last year, you know, you, we wanted to make sure that we didn't go over, you know, the bonus cushion last year because we were paying some, you know, some bonuses to uh, to Cole, and we knew that. And and that's, those, you know, again, it's hard to explain. It's real dollars, but you know, again. You know those things. Uh, you know, come on the cap management side of it. You know, the way we're sitting right now, we look like, you know, we might, you know, should have some ability to accrue some cap space. Um, you know, as we're built right now, or projected to be built moving forward here, which you know, hopefully that translates into opportunities as we move forward. Just build moving. Yeah, forward. Yeah, sure. Sure. Like yeah. 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 Appreciate it. With uh, this may seem like an obvious answer, but in case it's not, uh, with the respect of the futures of Mark Scheifele and Connor Hellebuck. How much of a factor is where you are in the standings come? You know, I guess you evaluate it at that point in time. But, you know, for us, um, you know, again, I think the, you know, the, the, the focus on the day-to-day -day basis is going to be about the process. And then, you know, we'll see where things go from there. We, we're hopeful, obviously, that we earn that right to, uh, you know, to, to, to be a team that's going to make some noise. And, and that's really what we're focused on right now. So you wouldn't rule out losing them for nothing down the no, I wouldn't rule out anything at this point in time, and, and I hope that um, you know I hope that we're in that situation where um, you know those tough decisions have to be made, and you know again it, it is about winning. Kevin, when that was made happen, you said that I, I think I have the wording wrong here, but you talked about this being like a new direction. Um, in your words, what do you think that new direction is going to be, or what, or what should it look like? Well, you know, again, I think the players, you know, it's the players room. And I think you've heard Bones say that, you know, many, many, many times is like, you know, great teams are led by the players. And so that's what we're looking for here is we're looking, you know, for them to take take charge. You know, they're they've been around the game, you know, the group of leaders that are going to be there. And, 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 and even a lot of the, you know, the, the the surrounding leadership group have been in the National Hockey League for for a long period of time. So we're looking for them. Uh, to establish, you know, who they are, what they, what they're all about, what their standards are, and, and hold themselves accountable. With waivers, like when that happens, like last year, you got absolutely got some penalty, and mm -hmm. as you said, it's a crapshoot. But what's the process of when you get the people that are on the wire deciding you're going to put a claim in? It must be a quick turnaround. How do you guys handle that from a manager's perspective? Yeah, so it, it is. You know, obviously, a, a player goes on uh, waivers. I believe it's 2 p.m. Eastern now, and you know, you don't know if you're going to get that person until you know 2 p.m. the following day. So literally, comes out, um, you know. Uh, in an email, and, and from that point in time, if, if you're if you're the successful claim, you're notified. If, if there's no claim, you're notified, and 
you know, there's different actions that go into there. If, if you're clearing a roster spot, you know, you, you move that player to the applicable team. If you've acquired a player, um, you know, you, you know, you then get them going. And in some cases, there's way uh, visas that are needed. It just depends on, on the, uh, the individual. But, you know, we've got a great team services group that, uh, you know, is right on top of it and, and uh, you know, and, and ready to go. But, you know, again, to claim a guy on waivers, you have to have, you know, cap space. You have to have roster spots. You have to have a lot of different things. So it's, it is a, it's, it's an interesting time. How Did quick is the decision to do it? Like how quickly from when you get the list to making the claim does your management group make that assessment? It depends. You have, like I said, you have 24 hours. You can sure. put it, you can put a claim in the minute you get the, you know, the, the, the waiver notice. Does doesn't matter. It, it it obviously goes to the team that is in reverse order from, you know, the uh, their their previous year's finish. I think up until November, and then it, it's current year's you know standings and stuff like that. So, it depends. You know, like. Sometimes things are done because you have an injury. Sometimes things are done because, you know, you have a need or you like a guy. Uh, you know, there, there's different reasons, you know, at different points in time why you, you choose to, you know, go that waiver route or, or not. You've mentioned before how you like how uh, Rick is, is quite candid. Um, did you talk to the players after those X meetings when, I mean, they publicly criticized their coach for publicly yeah. criticizing we them? We were all in the exit meetings. Um, you know, Bones, myself, uh, uh, Larry and Zinger, we were uh, all in every exit meeting with the players, and and um, you know, so again, there was nothing, there was nothing that was said that wasn't out said, you know, out in the open, you know, to the group there, and and you know, emotions are running extremely high at that point in time. Certainly, right after a game where, you know, where you're eliminated, the, the level of disappointment really can't be measured, and and you know, again, w whether it was a, you know, pristine game that you lost in overtime or a, you know, a, a game that you know got away from you, you know, at the end of the day, you're done. And, you know, there's, there's the harsh reality of that, you know, comes into play. You know, the moment that a player, you know, starts accepting that or starts not being upset or, you know, angry that they lost, then that, that person or player should start thinking about maybe a different profession. So um, I love the fact that there's emotion from the coach. I love the fact that there's emotion from the players. So you don't think it'll linger in a negative way in, in their relationship? Yeah, no, I don't think so. I think that Bones is pretty clear that, you know, I'm going to hold you to a high standard and, and I'm going to be fair. And, and, you know, again, there's going to be a level of, of acceptability and accountability that, you know, needs to come from the players first. And, and that's, you know, that's what we want to establish here. Rick said it was normal in the group by how things went down the stretch. Was there anything that you learned about that? Well, you know, again, I, I think that, uh, you know, you, every team is going to face adversity at, at different points in time. I think, you know, again, I learned a lot about how, you know, we faced adversity as a group when we lost, you know, Nikolai Ehlers for the period of time that we did and, and different other guys, you know, at different periods of time. The, you know, the hard part was is, you know, we couldn't overcome losing, you know, JMO. We couldn't uh, overcome losing, uh, you know, Scheif in, in, that, uh, in that Vegas series. But that's not an excuse. That's, that's an opportunity for us to you know, to, to look at it. Like, you know, one thing that Bones is very, very open about it. He says he's not here to find excuses. He's here to find solutions. And that's, he said that many, many times over last year. And, and I'm sure you're going to hear that many, many times over again this year. Kevin, with all the, the narratives out there, um, and I don't know if you're able to clarify this or not, but have I any don't of the, all the narratives. <laughs> so I don't know. Okay, all well, them. that's fine. Have any of the six players who are in expiring contracts who are going into the UFA uh, status, or their representatives ever told you that there's no chance for an extension beyond this season? Well, again, I've, I've, I've had different conversations with different players, and you know, again, um, the, the finality of you know, can you get an extension or can't you get an extension? I think is is, is still you know to be worked out. But as far as you know, the players' commitment to Winnipeg here, everyone's committed to playing here, everyone's committed to winning here. Um, does that mean everyone's going to get an extension, you know, at some points in time? I can't answer that from our perspective, you know, as far as, you know, could we even fit extensions for everybody? Um, you know, I did I had one comment one time. We talked about the, um, you know, when we lost all those players after I think it was 18, 19. And it was kind of like, well, I think that group of players was making $24 million at the time. And when they signed with their each respective teams, they, they made a collective $50 million, you know. So th those are things that... Um, you know, again, you just don't have control of it. But as far as the players' attitudes and the players' willingness to want to be Winnipeg Jets, I think that's what's bringing the level of excitement to camp right now. So I'm not going to get a yes or no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kevin.